Welcome to Our Jewish Roots with insightful Bible teaching from Israel by Dr. Jeffrey Seif. This week, we hear how to behave when dealing with our enemies, the poor, and when we pray to the Father. Ansar Shalom. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm David Hart. I'm Kirsten Hart. I am Jeffrey Seif, and welcome to Prince of Peace. Sar Shalom. Yes. It's good, but today is all about relationships, how we should behave with each other, correct? Yes, in fact, uh, and they don't always go perfectly. I, I mentioned in the teaching, now this goes back to 2005, I mentioned uh, Patty and I. Patty has since gone on to her reward of ovarian cancer, was the chariot that picked her up. and. You know, I've, I've remarried since then, Barry, Barry Kay, uh, and she's the princess of peace. Mm. I Aww, say that she's the way, the truth, and the wife. I <laughs> mean, um, it's great to have a partner to bring peace. And of course, the Lord is our partner who brings us peace, and that's what we're looking at exploring. And it's interesting, uh, you mentioned that this is, series is a few years old. Yeah. You're in a different stage in your life right now with, with Barry, but it's kind of like those modes of behavior, should I say, even 2,000 years ago, they haven't changed much. We still should treat each other the same. Correct, and to your point, the principles are timeless. There's the Jewish expression, door to door, from generation to generation. And uh, we need to keep telling this story to a next and a next to an upcoming generation, to the young. Uh, these principles are timeless and they're very important. I say it's important now, but it was important back in the day for them also. Oh yes, it was radically different. I mean, Yeshua came uh, telling people how they can have peace. You know, he's called the Prince of Peace for a reason. <laughs> and and, and uh, so many people are looking for it. It's in such high demand and such short supply. And that's the human condition, and he's the answer. We love your teaching today. Let's go to the Galilee now as we start today's program. <laughs> אבל אני אומר לכם, אהבו את אויביכם, והתפללו בעד רודפיכם. To those who had gathered that day on the mount, it must have seemed peculiar. Love your enemies? Do good to those who hate you? They would soon find reason to apply the Lord's teaching. A man wrestles with the wheel of his broken wagon. The town's know-it-all ridicules him, berating him to no end. If there was ever a reason to hate your enemy, this would be the time. But the Lord's word resonates. Do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. We're involved in webs of relationships, aren't we? And sometimes those relationships sour, don't they? The question is, how do we deal with all of that? in a world where tensions arise and with it uh, fermenting discontents come to the surface and uh, we find ourselves sometimes pushed around by others and sometimes pushing around others. How do we deal with all of that? Well, you saw in the preceding drama that sometimes people just rage and blame and point fingers. What does Jesus say? 
Behind me is the place where the Lord gave the Sermon on the Mount, so-called, and underneath me is the Sea of Galilee, and in my hand is the Bible. Let's look and see what Jesus said about dealing uh, with precarious uh, interpersonal situations. In uh, chapter 5, Jesus says that we should love our enemies. The verb to love, ahav in Hebrew, means to do good on behalf of. It doesn't mean to always feel good. Sometimes at the feeling level, I get wrapped around the axle, and you probably do too. But the Lord says that we do well to look to be loving difficulties aside. He says that we should bless those who curse. Truth is, is all this is easier said than done, isn't it? But just keep in mind, it's not me that said it, it's the Lord. If I understand him correctly, that benefits accrue when we endeavor to be blessings to people that aren't blessings themselves. He says, and to do good to those who, quote, spitefully use you. Uh, Judeo-Christian ethics bid us to uh, do mitzvot, to do blessings, to do good in the world, even in a world that's not very good to us. Fascinating. I found in my own life, and I, I don't know about yours, but uh, sometimes me and Patty get tangled up. Patty's my, my wife of 23 and a half years now, and you know, sometimes we just, it's usually my fault. <laughs> Uh, what I find with her is that when, when, when we get, you know, like husbands and wife, we have, you know, when, when heads bang, uh, what I find is when she opts just to be gracious and genteel, oh, listen, Jeff, okay, enough, God bless you, it diffuses me. When people are ramping up, it doesn't do any good to try and, you know, raise the levels. Uh, important is the de-escalation of conflicts that are cascading upwards. And if I understand the Lord on all this, uh, we want to do good to those. We want to endeavor to be a blessing. Uh, we want to try and love others. Truth be known, uh, though it seems to go patently against the grain at one level, it's a great recipe for, for healing, for wholeness. It's a great recipe for the recovery of equilibrium, though our natures don't necessarily abide the practice easily. Jesus says other things, and in verse 48, he closes saying, you must be perfect, even as your heavenly Father is perfect. And at one level, that can be an oppressing verse, can't it? Because the truth of the matter is, is that uh, none of us really are perfect. I think, by the way, the word is misconstrued because we don't understand the original language. Tom in Hebrew, or tamim, is the, uh, uh, the, the, the original on that. It means to be indiscriminate. It means to be uh, uh, fair and balanced in dealing with others. And this is what the Lord is talking about, that in our relationships with others, let's be kindly disposed, let's not be begrudging, let's realize that we all have our good days and our bad days. And let's realize most of all that if we follow Jesus, by virtue of our so doing, we'll get the better of vexing situations and people. ישמרו מלעשות צדקתכם בפני בני אדם מתוך מטרה שיראו אתכם. אם תעשו כן, אין לכם שכר אצל אבינו שבשמיים. For some the city gate was a place to buy and sell, while for others it was simply a place to be seen, for the fine rich robes, and for one's good deeds. Charitable deeds are honorable, the Lord had said, but not when they are flaunted. Such giving does merit a reward, but not from the Father in heaven. Frankly, I'm thrilled when anyone opts to be charitable, because I know that poor people benefit from the, uh, the gift but what amazes me personally is the way some people in the process of so doing demonstrate they're really not about wanting to give to others, but instead they're about gleaning something from others. Some sense of how righteous I am, how good I am. And frankly, friends, that spoils everything. It spoils the person. It ruins the person. That's why the Lord says in uh, chapter 6, verse 1, he says, take heed to yourself. For when you do a charitable deed, uh, don't do that, in effect. I, uh, 
grew up in a, a Jewish home and in Jewish homes we have a, a Shabbos meal, a Friday meal, and there's what's called a tzedakah box at the dinner table where individuals come in and they're beckoned to, to put something in there and fill up the box and send it away to a charity. The charity box is called a tzedakah box. The word tzedakah comes from tzaddik, it means to be righteous. The point is there's something uh, religious, there's something wonderful, there's something when individuals are devout, devout and they give of themselves like this as an extension of biblical faith and virtue. If I understand the Lord correctly, he says, do that. Of course, we live in a world today where the needs are great and we need individuals to rise up and be kindly disposed. I'm challenged by that to ask the question, Lord, how do you want me to be giving? What does that mean for me monetarily? It's just not me talking to you about, oh, support this ministry, or, uh, or, or I have to talk to myself about what it means to be loving, caring, and sharing. In the process of working through all that, I'm warned here, don't be pompous in the giving, Jeffrey. But more importantly for my purposes, and this is something I really want to commend to you, concerned as you might be naturally so in the world that we live in where, where money seems to be in uh, high demand of short supply, uh, when you have to ask the question how you can attend to your business, what I want you to hear in this is that in the giving there is a getting. And not the kind of getting that you garner by impressing the world how pompous you are, but consider with me please how the Lord says, quote, and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Just let's land on those words for a second. He says, listen, be giving. Don't let anybody know. Do it in secret. And you know what? Your father who's in secret sees. If we can just put some flesh on the parable, if we can just put some uh, application to the message, the point is that that if, if we're caring, if we're loving, God sees that. And friends, there's a blessing in that, if we'll opt to be that. I'm ramping up a little. I, want to, I don't want to sound preachy, but I, I want you to hear me, well, not even me, to hear Jesus on this. The Lord who sees in secret will reward you. When you give a charitable deed, do it. God sees that you're doing it. And there's a way that he's going to reward you in the doing. It's a word that Jesus gave 2,000 years ago. It had a lot of relevance today. It's a message for today. It means something to you. It means something to me. May we all be loving, caring, and sharing in individuals and watch the miracle how God blesses us by virtue of our so being. Offer on this program, the eight-part series, Sar Shalom, Prince of Peace, on two DVDs. What does it mean to walk in the footsteps of Israel's Messiah? To search out and answer, Dr. Jeffrey Scythe takes viewers to the Galilee region of northern Israel, where our Lord delivered his magnificent Sermon on the Mount. Eight half-hour programs include on-location reenactments, all performed by Hebrew-speaking Israelis. Authentic teaching, authentic drama, the authentic word. Ask for Sar Shalom, Prince of Peace. In this whole series, you're going to see tons of beautiful footage from probably one of our number one places we love to hang out in the world. That's Tiberias, the Sea of Galilee. We would love for you to join us on a tour in we, the spring and the fall. Right, we go two times a year. Yes. If you go to our website, levitt.com, click on the tour page, 
all kinds of information. One of our favorite things that we do right in the, in the Tiberias area, right on the Sea of Galilee, is we have a special lunch on our, one of our tour days. Yes. And we eat what they call a St. Peter's fish. It's tilapia and uh, one of the coins, usually one person in our group will uh -huh. have a coin in the fish's mouth. It's just a fun lunch. And that's something that's part of our tour. We add so many extra bonuses in when we go to Israel. We'd love for you to come with us. Now let's go back up to the Galilee to hear more of today's teaching. <laughs> ועמדם בבתי כנסת ובפינות של רחוב. אמן, אומר אני להם. חרם איתם. ואתה, כאשר תתפלל, תיכנס אל חדרך, סגור את הדלת בעדיך, והתפלל אל אביך אשר בספר. ואביך, הרואה במסתרים, יגמול לך. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and glory forever. Amen. They came to Yeshua, Jesus, and said, Lord, teach us to pray. They wanted to daven, which is the Jewish term for it, and Yeshua weighed in like this. He says, well, go with this, guys. It's called the Lord's Prayer, but it's really the disciples' prayer for my money because he's telling us how to do it. And what does he say? He says, Avinu Shabbat Shemayim, our Father who art in heaven, following with, hallowed be thy name. I know it sounds so very religious and Christian on one hand, but... It is such a Jewish prayer to um, petition God the Father in heaven with the uh, mention of the sanctification of his name is very, very Jewish. A major doctrine in Judaism, by the way, is what's called Kadosh Hashem and conversely Chalul Hashem. It means to sanctify the name or to uh, vilify the name. The point is that it's incumbent upon Jewish people from a Jewish perspective. The people of Israel are to make God's name look good in the world. And why is that? Because we're named after God, Yisrael, uh, the, 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 the Prince of God. And it's incumbent upon the citizens of that commonwealth to represent him well. Yeshua says as much in his own way, and Judaism does much the same. I'm looking here at a prayer book, uh, a common prayer, Yeheshme Rabba Mavorach, Laolam Ul Olme Olmaya. May the greatness of his name be blessed forever and ever. A prayer, by the way, that's recited in Jewish liturgy the world over and has been for some time. Jesus was a Jew, and he was commending the same sort of vision now, wasn't he? But there's a nuance in Jesus that he goes to underscore that I want to share with you. In the Sermon on the Mount... Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, etc. Very Jewish. And forgive us our trespasses, and hear me, as we forgive those who trespass against us. There's a comment, lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. Inasmuch as individuals are inclined to petition God, God come into my world and forgive me. Yeshua goes on record beckoning individuals to enter into his world to be agents of forgiveness themselves. The Lord's Prayer isn't thus about calling on God to perform in a certain way, though that's there. But there's an important ingredient here where in conjunction with that, we are called to perform in a certain way. And God knows it's really hard to love the unlovable, is it not? And everyone said amen. The Lord says in verse 14 after this, you know, if you forgive men their trespasses, God help us, it's hard. If, if we forgive men their trespasses, he says your heavenly father similarly will do likewise, will forgive you. But, and there's always a but, conversely, if you don't, he won't. In the Lord's prayer, and when we pray, we particularly beckon God for forgiveness and help. The Lord turns that around in a certain way on this day and beckons individuals to go out in the world and give some help 
and exercise some forgiveness. This is part of the Lord's Prayer and it's instruction for me and God knows I need the help and it's instruction for you and he knows you might need it as well. Learn to spend some time with God, seek him, seek his presence and then look to manifest his presence in the world at large. I love what Kirsten says about the Lord's Prayer. Tell him what your thought is on that. Well, my thought is from your teaching, we've discussed this, uh, you said the Lord's Prayer is very Jewish and I, we grew up in the church and we kind of think, and I'm being serious, like the Christians think that's theirs. Yeah. Like it's not a Jewish thing, the Lord's Prayer is, that belongs to the church. Right, well there's a reason why we call this thing our Jewish roots, <laughs> you know, that uh, people would be surprised how Jewish the Jesus story is. And I like looking at Jesus as, you know, the rabbi. You know, of course we did a series, the rabbi from Tarsus, Paul, but uh, Yeshua, they called him rabbi too. And, uh, you know, a lot of what we hear him saying in, in the New Testament has underlying Hebraic idiom associated with it that's lost to moderns. Well, like how you said in the beginning of the Lord's Prayer that our Father who art in heaven calling out who he is is a very Jewish thing. It is, mm -hmm. but what's different is there it's not, in the Jewish world, there's, there's a little more distance. He's the Father, he's a Father, it's reverential. That our Father that harks to the nature oh, of a relationship good. with mm -hmm. divinity uh, brought about by the Prince of Peace, uh, that is something that's uh, a more unique distinctive that Yeshua uh, brought about. People mm -hmm. were uh, less inclined to be as up close and personal. Oh, I, I like that. No, yes. that's just really good. I didn't even think about that. The Father to our Father. Right, and there it is, the Prince of Peace. You know, it's a lot of people, uh, because of sin and circumstance, you, uh, you, me, uh, we feel alienated from God, sometimes rightly so, because our sins make a separation. Other times, it's not that we're separated, it's just that our circumstances are so abysmal. Uh, for whatever reason, we have trouble finding the peace. But uh, Which reminds me to a point you uh, alighted upon earlier in the program in Matthew 17. Uh, they didn't have any money and Yeshua said, go fishing, and they pulled a fish and there was a coin in the mouth. God has a way of helping people in miraculous ways to bring about peace and help, yes? Mm -hmm. I think another thing in your teaching in this week's program is doing good for others. Yeshua did it, and he asks us to do it also. Right. And in, to do it in secret. In private. That was good. Yes, it's, well. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, there's a Jewish expression, tikkun olam, to repair the world. Mm. You know, there's lots of problems in this world. We want to be part of the cure. And the word forgiveness, forgiving, comes from two words, for and give. That is to say, we should be for giving, whether it's giving a dollar to help someone out, a TV minister, ministry, whether it's giving someone a break, you know, the Lord is forgiving and we want to be forgiving too. Right. Without calling it out and letting the world know. Yes, because the, the Lord has a way of uh, giving out rewards later on down the road. If it's public, then you get your reward now. That was the Lord's point. Yeah, it's a great, blessing. Right? right, it is and great teaching. We have more to come, stay with us. If you only watch us on television, you're missing additional content available only on our social media sites. Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. You can always visit our website, which is home base for all of our ministry activities and information. There you can sign up for our free monthly newsletter, watch the TV program, or visit the online store. Join us as we tour Israel and Petra. Please contact us for more information. We would love to hear from you. One of my favorite things about social media is that it connects a single person with the rest of the world. And what I love about our social media with our Jewish roots is it connects us to all of you. So please join us, find us. We are on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. We have a large presence, a large following on Facebook, and we'd love to meet you there. So much more than just this program, the Bearded Bible Brothers, if you haven't seen them, they're great. We have lots of interviews and things like that. A lot of extra things on social media. News, articles, so much. We'd love for you to join us on that. You're on social media. Well, yeah, but truth be known, that's really not my medium. That is to say, I'm, you know, 65, I'm rather old school. Uh, I'm less involved with the Facebook and the Instagrams and the Twitters and whatever it's all <laughs> called. I mean, but the thing is, it's the young, the more so, mm -hmm. from my understanding, that engage it. That's the good news. We got to get to the young. The bad news is, is that 
they usually don't support ministries. And if you're young and you're watching, I want to thank you if you do. But if you're not young and you're watching, I want to ask you if you'll please help us to reach the young. And to that end, whether it's television, whether it's the social network, uh, there's people, there's computers, there's airtime, there's things at play to help us get it out there. And the truth of the matter is the gospel advances, whether it's at a local church or a television ministry, it, it, uh, it advances because people see value in it. And if you see value in what we do, the way we do it, if you like the good news through the eyes of the Jews, please help us to tell that story and make a generous gift now. God will see you doing it the way we do it through dramatic reenactments and you standing, I think you said on the Sea of Galilee. I don't think you were walking on the Sea of Galilee. I think you could walk on the water. Your wife respects me. She holds me in high regard, but I only know one person that walked on the Sea of Galilee. Pretty phenomenal what you've done there. You ought to try it. See if you can do it. I love swimming in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you'll do. More to come next week. Yes. And we end with a song from our founder, Zola Levitt. But before we do that, a word from the scripture. Sha'alu, shalom, Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Yeshua, return unto our Father. Yeshua, return to us alone. Yeshua, return unto Israel. Yeshua, return unto your Yeshua, return unto Join us right now for additional content that is only available on our social media sites, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Visit our website, levitt.com, for the current and past programs, the television schedule, tour information, and our free monthly newsletter, which is full of insightful articles and news commentary. View it online, or we can ship it directly to your mailbox every month. Also on our website is the online store. There, you can order this week's resource, or you can always give us a call at 1-800-WONDERS. Your donations to Our Jewish Roots Help us to support these organizations as they bless Israel. Please remember we depend on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. This has been a paid program brought to you by Zola Levitt Ministry.